Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to create an app with Streamlit. We're going to look at some of the basics. We'll go over, create an app, and then in another video, I'm going to show you how we can host this app with Streamlit as well. So Streamlit is pretty cool for like setting up fast web applications with Python. We can basically just have our computer vision, machine learning, data science projects running with Streamlit. I already created a video about that where we can actually like do live streaming from OpenCV with Streamlit. So definitely check that out if you're interested. Again, in this video here, we're just going to go over this example from the Streamlit documentation, and then we'll see how we can set up an app. So first of all, we have opened up a window with Visual Studio Code. First of all, we're just going to create a new file. We're just going to call that um, uber pickup. We're going to create a new file, uber underscore pickups dot pi. So we're going to use Python to create these streamlit application. Again, I'll just zoom in here a bit so you guys can better see what's going on. We can actually just go up and open a new terminal. We can also like install the requirements that we need. So basically we just need to pip install like um, numpy, pandas, and also streamlit. So you can just directly pip install that in your terminal. So that will just be pip install streamlit. My requirements are already satisfied, so it won't download here on my computer, but this is the only thing that we're going to use. Later on, I'm going to show you how we can actually like generate a requirements file um, for our application so we can directly deploy them with the Streamlib in another video. So first of all here, we're just going to run our application, then we'll have it over on another tab here so we can actually like see the changes that we make in real time. So this is also one of the cool things about using Streamlit. Then we'll go over the basics, like how we can create titles, uh, basic plots, how we can actually like create some interactive like sliders, um, check boxes and all those different kind of things. So this is basically just uh, like a basic tutorial and video about how you can get started with Streamlit and create your first web applications in Python. So first of all here, we'll just go down into the terminal again. We're just going to, right now we're inside the correct directory. So we're just going to have Streamlit run. So this is the run command that we have. And then we're basically just going to type out our uh, Python script, hit enter, and now it will open up localhost and we can act like just to see it in our browser. I'll just drag it over here from the right. So here we can see that we now have this tab here open. It is basically just our web application. We don't have anything on it yet uh, because it basically just runs the Python file. And again, we don't have anything in our Python file yet. I'll just minimize this a bit so you guys can see what's going on. And then when we hit save on our actual like Python script over here to the left, it will automatically update in our Streamlit app so we can see our uh, changes live in our application as well. So that is very cool that we're able to see that. Then we'll be able to create applications way, way faster and we can actually like, see what is going on while doing the things. So first of all here, I'll just copy paste. So again, we just need to import the different modules. So we need Streamlit, uh, NumPy and also Pandas. So right now we have the modules in, imported. We can go in and set up a title. We're just going to set up a title, st.title. Uber pickups in New York. I'm just using GitHub Copilot for this. So this is just a basic like building block for Streamlit. So this will be our title. If we just hit command S here, we will then save it over here to the right. We can see that the source file has changed. We can either like just rerun it or we can just hit always rerun. We're going to do that. So then when we hit save on our X like um, Python script over here to the left, then it will automatically update it in our web application over here to the right. So let's now just hit command S and then we'll go over here to the right. And now we should be able to see our um, update or else we're just going to hit rerun. And then when we do new changes over to the left, it will automatically update in our web application. So now we can see that we have our title, Uber pickups in New York. Then again, our application is running and then we will go in and fetch some data. I'm just going to copy paste these lines of code because this is basically just like a function for loading in the data. So this will be Uber pickups in New York. So we can see like the timestamp um, for those pickups. Again, then we can generate a heat map over New York. We can show different kind of like visualizations and plots. We can even have like an interactive map of New York. So I'm just going to copy paste that. Here we're just going to see we have the data column with date and time. We also have the data URL here. So it's basically just like an S3 bucket from um, Amazon. We just have the Uber raw data from September 14th um, as a CSV file. So we're just going to load in a CSV file stored in a pandas data frame. We can both visualize the raw data as we're going to do in just a second. And we can also create uh, plots with only a few lines of code with Streamlit. So now we have our data here loaded. Um, then we can actually like just go down. I'm just going to copy paste the next block and then we'll go over what it does. So first of all, we just create like a text element here. So we're going to load the data. This is just creating like a text element. Um, and then we're going to load the data. 
10,000 rows, we want to load 10,000 rows from our data set into our data frame. Then we can manipulate that data frame, create visualizations, plots, and all those different things. And then we're just going to put out text here as well uh, when our data is done loading. So the idea behind Streamlit is that when you actually like interact with your application, it will rerun your whole Python script. So when we just like do new things, click on a slider, click on a checkbox, it will run the whole Python script uh, through again. So Rex like needs to do a couple of modifications. We also need to know like how the stream like work under the hood. Uh, because again, when we need to load this data here, we're going to load like 10,000 rows um, into our data frame from an S3 bucket. So that will like, like take up a lot of time uh, when we want to create these like instant real time web applications. So I have some tips for that. But let's now just hit command save and see what it does over here to the right. So it says loading data. And now it should just take some time. Here we can see that loading data is now done. So again, this is really nice. Like it can be used for a lot of different kind of things. It is really easy to work with. We can see how fast we're able to create these um, web applications. So Streamlit actually like has something called caching where we can actually like cache our data and the results from our function. So we can use this decorator to actually like do that. We're just going to have an add. We're going to create an add st.cache. And then we basically have two options. We can either like cache a resource or um, just cache some data. Again, if you have like some kind of like data frame uh, variables and all those different things, some some outputs from your um, from your calculations functions and so on, you will just cache the data. Where if you have some resources, if you're loading in like uh, models, neural networks, and and all those different things, you will just cache the resources instead of the data. So now we just have the decorator st .cache data then what it actually like does is that it stores the output from our function. It knows what input they will actually like call the function with and it also knows the output of it. So if we don't change the input to our function and the code inside of our function does not change, then it will actually like just look up in the cache for, uh, for the data here and then it will return that instead from the cache instead of doing all the calculations again and actually like loading the data from this URL. So this can help you speed up your web applications significantly. Also, if you're doing some large computations and all those around things, then you can basically just cache your data so your web applications load faster. So now we're just going to change that down here at the bottom. So loading data done. We're just going to change this to loading data done with caching. So now just try that. We hit command save here and let's see how fast it is in our act like web application. So I hit command S now. Loading data. So right now we're running the load data. And then it should actually take some time done with caching. We can just try to, to do it again. So done caching. I'm just going to delete this. Command S and now done caching. I can just hear SSS. Command S. We can just see like how fast it actually like loads the data because we're using this caching technique from Streamlit. So that's really cool. We're definitely going to use that in the future for a lot of other applications. It just makes your web applications way faster. Okay, so let's now take a look at some of the functionalities and features that we can do with Streamlit. Let's create some. First of all, let's just visualize the raw data, create some plots, and also an, an interactive chart. And then we can do a lot of the different things. We can add buttons, sliders, checkboxes, and so on. But let's now just start with a subheader here. So we're basically just going to create like the raw data, and then we're just going to write it out. So this write function here can be used for a lot of different kind of like um, data types. We can both have data frames, a NumPy arrays, just standard like variables, and all those different kind of things. It will figure it out by itself, and then it will write the data out into your web application. So let's now hit command S here and save our application again. So we have st.subheader. So right now we have a title, then we're going to create a subheader with our raw data, and then we're just going to write out a data frame. So we actually create a data frame over here to the right, and then, then we can see the results. So again, we just visualize the raw data. We have all the columns here, or like all the rows. So the number of rows here to the left, we have the date and time. And then we also have the position here in New York for the pickups. Uh, by Ubers. If we just scroll down, we can see that we have 10,000 rows. Again, it is very responsive. It is very fast, even though we have this running in our web application. So that's really cool. We can also just do a lot of different things. We can do some sorting. We can do the sorting based on the columns up here at the top. So again, we can do a lot of different things. We can even like highlight specific like fields. Really cool, can be useful for a lot of different things. But again, this is just visualizing the raw data. You can also have a list. 
just have call st.write, it will throw out a list and then it will find the best way to actually like visualize it and write your data out to the web application. Okay, so now we have the raw data visualized. We can go in and create a histogram so we can actually like see the number of pickups per hour. So we basically just have a number of bins on the x-axis and then we have the total count on the y-axis. So we basically just create a histogram. I'm just going to copy paste this. So first of all, we need a subheader. Again, number of pickups per hour. Then we can create a histogram with NumPy. We can use like our preferred framework for that. So basically just have our histogram. We're going to create a histogram with the date, uh, date column in our data frame based on the hour. And then we just specify the number of bins. So we want 24 bins uh, because we have 24 hours um, a day. And again, we can also specify the range and all those different kind of things. Uh, again, you can do this for a lot of different kind of like data, data types, uh, data sets, and so on. Again, this is just a CSV file. We're loading into our pandas data frame, and then we manipulate it, visualize it in different ways, create histograms, and so on. So again, this is really easy. And then we can just directly throw it into our web application. So now we can basically just set up a bar chart. We have our histogram calculated with our histogram values. Then we call streamlit bar chart. So we're basically just going to create a, a chart with bars from our histogram and we pass in our histogram values. Now we hit command S and it should update over here in our web application. So down here at the bottom, we can see the number of pickups per hour. We have this chart that we can see. So we can see that the busiest hour in New York um, by, for pickups uh, by Ubers is uh, 17, which is basically just 5 p.m. We can just see how easy it is to analyze our data in our web application. Really nice distribution here. We can then see like the number of pickups per hour. Again, we can do a lot of other different kind of like plots for our data. We can go into the reference and the documentation for Streamlit and find all the other options that we have. So now we're going to plot our data on a map. We're going to create a new subheader as well. So here we just have a subheader with map of all the pickups. So we're basically going to have an interactive map with all the pickups visualized on that map. And then we can just call st.map, st.map. And then we basically just throw in the data and we just have our whole data frame here. So we throw in the data frame with all the pickups by the Uber, st.map, command save, and then it should update our web application over here to the right. Again, this is just really awesome. Like I'm mind blown by these results that we get. But here we can just see like how, how good it works. Like this is very responsive when we're moving the map around. We can even like zoom in. Um, so here we can see like on Manhattan, it is pretty busy here uh, for this example. So this is basically just like all the data visualized on the map here of New York. Again, we can do a lot of different kind of things. So let's now go in and sort it by a specific hour. Then we can create a slider. So we can actually like just have a slider so we can see the map um, live based on a specific hour of the day. So now we're basically just going to create an hour to filter. Uh, I'm doing, going to copy paste that. Again, we just take this and then we're just going to replace it. So hour to filter, we have the filter data. So we're basically just going to fill our data based on the hour specified up here. We have the same subheader and then we just throw in the map here. I'm just going to hit command S. And now we can see that our map of all the pickups at 5 p.m. So now we can see that it is not as dense, but we can see, see that it is still pretty busy here on Manhattan in New York. Really nice, really cool. And now we can even go up and replace this hour to filter. Instead of having a variable, we can create a slider so we can actually like just interactively um, play around with it in our web application and get the results based on that. So just go down here. I'm just going to copy paste this line where we can create an st.slider. So I'm just going to replace this. Here we go. So we have our to filter st.slider. It will create a slider in our web application at the desired place. We specify the hour and then also the range from our hours to filter and also a default one here for a slider. Command S, it will update update over here to the right and now we can see that we have this slider so we start at 5 p.m we can then just like play around with it we can see that the map updates under the, the slider so map of all pickups at 7 a.m 9 a.m we can even just see here like 10 a.m let's just take that we're going to go down zoom in see like how are the pickups in new york at a specific time of the day 
can be used for a lot of different things. This is really easy to do data analysis here in your web application. And again, I'm going to create a new video where I'm going to show you how we can actually like export this, how we can deploy these web applications with Streamlit. We basically just need to create a requirements file um, of different kind of like frameworks and modules that we need for our app to run. So instead of running on the local host, we will deploy it with Streamlit. So definitely make sure to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video so you get a notification when I upload that video on the channel so again let's just go down set a button to actually like toggle on data um, so again if we want to see like the raw data or not we can have a button um, toggling that so up to this we'll just go up again we have the sub uh, right data so here we can basically just have a button so we just check a button if it's pressed or like if it's checked off then we're going to write our data out as the raw data and else we will not visualize it in our web application so we basically just have an if statement here we're just going to copy paste that. There we go. And then we paste it in. Just do an indentation. So again, we have st.checkbox. We basically just need to call like a couple of lines of code. Then we can create text box, subheaders, like write out different charts, visualizations, and all those different kind of things. So show raw data. We're going to have a checkbox for that. Command S. So if we go over here to the right, we can now see that we have this checkbox which show raw data. If I check it off, we can see that we now get the raw data in our web application. And I can also uncheck it again. And then it will remove the raw data from our web application. And then again, we can just like toggle it on and off. This is really cool like for cleaning up things we can also have these checkbox do other things but then just visualizing the data we can also like have different features that we want to run on our map for example based on a different number of checkbox you can also have multiple checkbox and all those different kind of things we can even go in and create like multiple pages here in our web application i'm going to cover that in another video so thank you guys for watching this video here and again remember to the subscribe button and bell notification under the video also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future it definitely helps me and the youtube channel out in a massive way so have computer vision tutorials deep learning tutorials if you're interested in those things on my channel i'll link to one of them up here or else i'll see you next video guys Bye for now.